Would you feel comfortable riding a bike on roads like this? <laughs> what about a road that has a bike lane? Would you feel comfortable riding here? I think most people who live in LA would answer no to both of those questions. But if you relied on Google Maps to give you an impression of where you can bike around LA, you'd be completely misled because many of the lanes that they're labeling as bike friendly aren't in reality. The legend here labels all bicycle friendly roads as this dotted green line, but this label is often given on roads that don't deserve it at all. As an example, let's show you San Vicente over in West LA. Google is calling this a bicycle friendly road despite it being a very high traffic through fare with almost no bike infrastructure. I mean, we got a little Shiro telling you this is where they want you to ride your bike, but if you ride here, you'll get hit eventually. But this deceiving designation as a bicycle-friendly road shouldn't be entirely blamed on Google. The city is what's calling this a bike-friendly route, and their Shiro system is what designated it for Google and flagged it as proper infrastructure. If this was your first time viewing Google's bike map of LA County and the surrounding areas, you'd be under the impression that pretty much all of Southern California is a biking paradise. But if we dig into it a little bit further, I can show you why some of these lanes are mislabeled, and while Google does get some of them right, it really just proves the case that we need a new version of a bike map in cities. So I thought the best way to showcase this would be to make my own version of a biking map and compare it to Google so we can highlight their flaws. As an example, let's take 3rd Street near Park La Brea. This is an extremely popular area of central LA, and you'd think it'd be the prime place to put in some bike lanes, but there's absolutely no bike infrastructure on 3rd Street. In fact, the city didn't even designate this road as a bike path, so Google just kind of made it up here, I think, or at least that's what it seems. And the annoying thing about this is that there's residential streets nearby that a lot of bikers use as a cut-through path to go west or east along 3rd Street. But here, Google only labels one of them as a bicycle-friendly road and leaves the other ones out. And this is despite the fact that they all look like this. In my mind, this is much more of a bicycle-friendly road, although it's nowhere near what I'd like it to look like as a proper sloped street. So what would this all look like on my own map? Well, let's see. In order to save some time, I've labeled this entire residential neighborhood as having slowish streets which I'm defining as a road that feels pretty safe to bike on and has low vehicle speeds throughout most of the day. And I kept a separate label for the two roads closest to 3rd Street because I wanted to indicate that this could be taken as a cut-through path in order to avoid all the traffic and danger that I showed you earlier. So as an experiment to fix this, I've created my own version of a biking legend that I think better suits day-to-day -day reality. Here I've listed them in order from what I consider safest to least safe. I've kind of taken the way that people rank skiing slopes as an inspiration for this. Slopes are mainly rated on their difficulty level, but also on the aspects of the terrain that you're riding on. So I labeled 3rd Street here as a dangerous road, and I marked it in red. Every red road you see on this map is just like 3rd Street. They're typically large through fare roads which have tons of traffic and absolutely no bike infrastructure. These red roads are typically so unsafe that most people will stick to the sidewalks when they confront them. Or at least I do too. But riding the sidewalks consistently is not safe either. There's tons of driveways where people peel out at high speeds, and you're constantly in conflict with pedestrians and other debris. But there's a reason so many people still feel safer on the sidewalks despite their problems. Because they're fully separated from the road. And that's a good segue to show you the other lane on this map that I consider the best for bikers. It's labeled orange, and it represents a fully road-separated biking path. Here's one of my favorite examples of those over near the 405 in West LA. But going back to my map, the park here isn't actually dedicated or meant for bikers, but you can legally use it as a biking or scooter path, and many people do. Another road-separated path that bikers can use here is in the Grove. The Grove doesn't let you bike here, so you're going to have to walk your bike, but you can use it safely to quickly cross into the path and go across the street. Here you can also see these dark purple lanes that I've labeled. These represent the best form of a slow street. Let's take a look at one of those here in the Grove, which serves as a 5 mile per hour back alley route for cars to pass through. But it's also one of the safest streets that a biker can ride on, because cars are limited to 5 miles per hour, there's speed bumps everywhere, and you're pretty much guaranteed to not get sideswiped. Going back to my map, there's one more example that I haven't shown you yet, and that's of a bad bike lane, which I designate in yellow. This is by far the most common quote-unquote bike lane that you can see in the city of LA. And it also happens to be the worst form of bike lane, because it has no door zone separation and it only provides you a white strip of paint for protection. There's a lot of debate actually in the cycling community about whether or not it's useful to even take this kind of lane. 
because if you actually ride it right in the middle where you're expected to by drivers, you'll be put right into the door zone, and if one of these parked cars opens their door, they'll hit you sending you flying right into the road or into an oncoming car. And this leads to a situation where it's actually safer to ride on this white line here, but that leads to some aggressive encounters with drivers who don't like that and swerve around you. There are a few examples of bad bike lanes like this working in LA, but that's usually the case only when you have safety in numbers. Check this one out for example over in Venice. If it seems weird to you to see so many bikers like this bunched up in LA, there's a reason for this. This dangerous typical LA road connects to one of the most famous protected bike lanes in LA, the Marvin Brood Beach Path. To wrap up a summary of my biking map, we're going to move over to West LA now where I'm most familiar with. My map here has another feature which I don't think Google uses, and that's labeling an entire area which is unsafe to bike in. This area that I've highlighted is called Brentwood, and it's one of the hilliest single-family home neighborhoods in LA. And it's almost entirely comprised of McMansions, single-family homes, dead ends, cul-de-sacs, and private access roads. And not only that, there's only one thoroughfare which links this entire community, Sunset Boulevard, one of the most notoriously dangerous stretches of road in LA. And because of the way that Brentwood's laid out, if you're biking here from West LA, you pretty much have to cut through Sunset Boulevard at some point in order to reach the hiking trails above the community. Google actually seems to get this because they're not putting any bicycle-friendly route labels here at all. As far as I can tell, there's no easy guide to tell people where to bike around here. And this is a huge problem because having to cross Sunset even for 20 seconds is enough of a bad experience to make you want to quit biking in LA for good. So that's why I've identified three possible cut-through paths that people can take from Santa Monica or West LA. If you rode your bike up one of these three safe paths, you'll eventually reach the trails here which connect to the valley. And if you have an electric mountain bike, you could actually beat traffic on the 405 and reach the valley quicker than you can in a car. Obviously this isn't going to turn into a Monday to Friday commute for people, it's still going to take a lot out of you to mountain bike across here, but I wanted to label it as an option on my map. I have a sense that if more people found out that there were quicker and safer ways to get to a place instead of driving, that induced demand for biking would explode. Obviously we need to build the infrastructure out to actually cater to that, and that's a whole different topic, but just getting Google to reform their bike map would go a long way in getting people to realize that there's safe and protected routes in many of these cities that we consider car-centric. And if Google doesn't end up fixing their map, well, versions of my own map can be replicated in pretty much every city, and I encourage anyone who wants to and has the time to to please do so.